I always believe that uh, there's so much to learn. The moment we stop playing, we stop learning. I'm Thomas Terraceno. Welcome to Webs of Life. The spider web is alive and is a being, is part of the body of the spider. We only keep asking, do you work with spiders? Well, I work with spider web as a provocation of trying to decenter the question of what is alive, what not, and who we give agency. What you could see here are many different webs weave together from many different species. A spider who weave a type of web, it incorporates the web of some other spiders who have built previously. When we always reproject the idea of arachnophobia, that is something which is global, it's very easily projected as we being all the same. Pierre Bolo lives in Somier, Cameroon. The spiders, for them, are many times consulted as a way to try to understand themselves. And when there are certain questions in the village that need to be sorted out by the people who live over there. But I'm very happy and proud that one of the first pieces had a serpentine is, uh, is his own webpage and his own portal where he will offer the possibility for the visitors of the gallery at the price that he have established to offer this, uh, this service. Some humans are thinking that are independent from the climate of this world, that we could isolate it ourselves in such a way that uh, we do not depend on each other. It's the basic kind of idea that the exhibition of the serpent and how much the way that uh, we relate with each other in part of the world affect other parts of the world. And the north part of Argentina, where there's a province, uh, I was born in Tucumán, there is a huge deposit of lithium, and the people who live in that region are suffering from this lithium extraction because for every ton of lithium, it's required two million liters of water. And that was a little bit a relationship when we think about exhibition, is the participant of the exhibition being aware about the responsibility and the ability to respond they might have uh, with what they carry in their pocket, uh, that many of us have a mobile phone. Can we fly differently? We are not talking about aerodynamic, but we are talking about aerostatic. Can we start to float on, on the air without burning? fossil fuel or propane, or without using helium, or without using hydrogen. And it's been, in this case, it's just a volume of air, an envelope, which in this case is black because we'll absorb more heat from the sun. And in this case, it's just like a pure air, which when get warmer by the, by the sun, it, it the, is the capacity of becoming weightless. When we went to Argentina and we invited Leticia Marquez to pilot one of these cultures, we, we were in the land of indigenous people who were struggling pretty much about this global transition. They did, they wrote this beautiful message on the sculpture, which is written, water and lives are worth more than lithium. And to that extent, we lift up that message also with a possibility, with a hope, uh, which go beyond the electrification of certain technologies, right? And with that, we made a more sustainable flight in human history. You can see the different wind circulations around the world, and uh, we have developed uh, something which is uh, an app, which people will be have access also at the Serpentine, of imagine how they could fly free around the world of fossil fuel and carbon emission. It's mean, people who might have come to the exhibition, maybe, or to London through the burning of fossil fuel with an aeroplane, and uh, we are offering also an alternative future where um, actually they might be able to drift with the wind. In the exhibition, we'll be tracking the energy consumed by each artwork, and we'll turn on and off according how much sun there is outside and how much energy people are able to produce also by pedaling on the bicycles. This means when it's a bit cloudy, some artworks will enter into a sleepy mode and when it would get a little bit of sun again, will turn on again. I mean, there are different variations of how the exhibition will be perceived and performed. And we invite every, not anymore visitors of the exhibition, but participant to try to change their habits of how they will come to the Serpentine and participate in this kind of three months performance. What 
here you have one of the sculptures would be the serpentine and is the one we have built for all the well for some of the animals which are the park in this case here there are for one two three birds another one on top here uh, another one down here and this for a squirrel we'll see the cycle of life pretty much in action because some might be a bit maybe too close or too far away but also have a different season and temporality. This mean when uh, is inhabited by one species, the other one might come later during the season. It means it's a little bit about rethinking also which type of urbanism and how uh, we humans, uh, the majority now are living in huge conglomerate of cities and cities somehow exclude a lot of other type of life, which is not human. And looking forward about how the Serpentine can also become not only a place for human artists, but also for a multi-species encounter of the whole diversities of web of life that this embrace. <laughs>